I recently made a video talking about eight things to do in Grand Marais, Minnesota, and that video was pretty popular, so I'm going to make another video today talking about 10 more things to do in Grand Marais, Minnesota. I love Grand Marais. I spent a lot of time there. My last video were more general things to do in Grand Marais, and this video is going to be 10 slightly more specific things that I personally like to do in Grand Marais or would like to do in Grand Marais. I haven't done this one yet, but I would love to take a class at the North House Folk School. The North House Folk School hosts classes in Grand Marais where they teach a lot of traditional skills and crafts, things that would be lovely to know how to do, but it's hard to find people that actually do these things these days. Some of the classes are making a canoe, weaving and yarn craft, herbal classes where you can learn more about herbs and how to use them, yurt building and lots of different handcrafts, how to make a knife. Some of the classes are online, some of the classes are just a day, and some are a weekend or a full week. Again, I've never taken a class myself at the North House Folk School, but it's definitely a bucket list item. Driving up the Gunflint Trail to look for wildlife is a very popular thing to do in the Grand Marais area. You might see bears or moose or deer, maybe. Deer are usually closer to town a wolf or a lynx. I've seen all of these animals on the Gunflint Trail, but you do want to drive slowly because these animals just pop out of nowhere and I've been driving down the Gunflint Trail and had to slam on the brakes because all of a sudden there was a moose in front of me. So I remind myself every time I'm on the Gunflint Trail that there's no rush and that it's definitely worth it to take your time. You'll probably see more animals anyway. Sitting at the harbor in the parking lot right by Lake Superior in Grand Marais, every evening and morning is a tradition, it feels like. Every day there are people there waiting to watch the sunrise or the sunset over the mountains or over Lake Superior, depending on the time of year. As the parking lot fills up, it feels like you're at an event or a drive-in theater, but it's just watching nature do its really cool thing. Definitely something to do at least one of the mornings or one of the evenings that you'll be in town. Another way to watch the sunset is to drive up to Pincushion area. They call it Pincushion Mountain, but it's not really a mountain. And you can park in a parking lot up there as well and overlook Grand Marais and Lake Superior and watch the sunrise and sunset from a higher elevation. There are also trails that you can hike, the Pincushion Trail System that starts right there as well. And I've done night hikes from that area and it's really pretty and usually a little bit less trafficked than other areas. Personally, I like to hang out at Lake Superior on the lake shore. I will sometimes drive just outside of Grand Marais for a little bit more privacy. There are public beaches, public areas where you can access the lake outside of town. One of the places that I'm thinking of specifically has little picnic tables so you could bring a picnic or you could just eat on the shore as well if you don't mind sitting on the rocks. I love just hanging out by the lake because it's really pretty and whether it's windy or not, you can definitely take in the experience of being on such a big lake. I've also been on one of these beaches and seen somebody surfing in Lake Superior and I've seen lots of loons and ducks and different wildlife along the lake as well. So definitely just something that is an easy pass the day kind of experience. In my last video about things to do in Grand Marais, I mentioned that Grand Marais is a little bit of an artist village but you can bring your own form of art as well. Yes, definitely check out those artist shops, but it's really fun to bring your camera and do your own photography or bring your paints and make your own painting or your sketch pad or even bring your yarn for knitting or weaving and you can be outside and doing one of these activities that you really love. It can be fun for kids as well. If you're taking pictures or drawing or things like that, you can capture the beauty around you in your own way or if you're doing something like knitting, it's just nice to be outside and listen to the outside nature-y sounds and the waves crashing on Lake Superior while you're doing something that you love. Next time you're in Grand Marais, make sure to go outside at night. The night sky is incredible. I mean, <laughs> Grand Marais is far enough north to experience northern lights depending on the day and the solar weather. There are also nights when Lake Superior is calm as glass and the big moon rises over the lake and it reflects 
on this calm huge lake superior the surface of the water will like light up orange if the, the moon is orange that night or yellow or whatever it's really pretty just outside of grand marais minnesota is where the boundary waters is and the boundary waters is considered a nighttime night sky sanctuary that's not what it's called. It's considered a dark sky sanctuary, meaning that there's very little light pollution in the Boundary Waters. And Grand Marie is pretty good as well, so if you're outside at night, and even if you can get up the Gunflint Trail a little ways at night, you can experience incredible, incredible Milky Ways and starry nights, and there are always shooting stars that you can check out. Definitely take advantage of that in Grand Marie. So Artist Point and the lighthouse in the harbor of Grand Marais are beautiful pretty much any time, but when it's really wavy and the waves are just crashing over the structures, it's incredible. I love to watch waves crash on very windy days in Grand Marais. Lake Superior can produce up to 30 foot waves and that's huge. So these are the coolest days in my opinion to check out the lake, but they're also really dangerous. So be aware that Lake Superior is very powerful and can be deadly, so keep your distance from the lake shore, but you can definitely watch these waves crash from a safe distance. After all of your outdoor activities in Grand Marais and surrounding areas, it's nice to get a massage. There are a few different massage places in Grand Marais. I personally have been to Lutzen, L-U-T-Z-E-N, so it's like Lutzen, like plan words, but that place was phenomenal. They served us tea. We sat in this little waiting room and got to look out over Lake Superior because they're right on the shore. This was before so I don't know if things have changed at all, but it was a really cool experience and the other massage places in Grand Marais are great too, I've heard. The final thing on this list of 10 things to do in Grand Marais is to go fishing. You can bring your own fishing supplies and fish in the harbor or off of the lighthouse little area. I've seen people fish there before. Or you can get a Lake Superior charter fishing boat where they take you out into Lake Superior and do lots of different types of fishing depending on the type of year. Or you can go inland on one of the smaller lakes uh, away from Lake Superior and get a fishing guide to go out and do some other types of fishing like walleye or crappie or things like that as well. Lots of different options and there's more than even the things in this video and my last video of all the things you can do in Grand Marais. So if you've done other things that you want to share, let me know in the comments. Or if you've done any of the things I mentioned in this video, tell me what your experience was like. Thank you so much for watching. I hope your next trip to Grand Marais is phenomenal because you deserve it.